Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel, and I have a couple of topics relating to the SEC vs. Ripple case that are notably interesting. Uh, here's a headline referencing one of them from you today. Ripple vs. SEC. Brad Garlinghouse expecting some court decisions soon, and he also highlights exactly why it's provably the case that uh, SEC Supreme Leader and Dictator Kim Jong Gensler is indeed uh, behind the idea of regulation by enforcement. And then there was this article from Finance Feeds titled SEC v. Ripple, next decision critical for settlement or uh, complete victory. By the way, that complete victory portion, that comes directly from attorney John Deaton. So I'm going to give you the full context of what he meant when he said that. But uh, yeah, the quote is that John Deaton has quote uh, said about Ginzer, he has been advised Ripple could achieve a complete victory. But uh, before going any further, I do want to be clear, I do not have a legal or financial background of any kind. I am not offering legal or financial advice, and you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who makes YouTube videos about crypto-related topics, but just as a hobby and just for fun. So in we go here. Uh, in a recent interview with Fox Business, Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse has shared an update on the ongoing legal battle with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission claiming that the court will soon rule on several motions soon. And here's a quote from him. The case continues to move forward. We are expecting some decisions from the court, you know, sooner rather than later. And so Brad highlighted that SEC Supreme Leader and Dictator Kim Jong Gensler has publicly stated that he expects the SEC will lose some of the cases they bring. Now, Brad says this is the definition of regulation by enforcement. Attorney John Deaton notes that Kim Jong Gensler's public message regarding the SEC court victories has shifted because he's been advised that a ripple could achieve a complete victory. And, uh, and in the past, um, he has stated that the SEC has never lost a court case in the realm of cryptocurrency. That, that's, that's what Gensler has, has bragged about, frankly. And of course, I've broken that down and critiqued it heavily, and for good reason, because out of the over 70 cases that were cited, half of them had nothing to do with digital assets themselves, not actual cryptocurrencies, just uh, firms that had some sort of connection to blockchain in some sort of way, but not, with, not regarding the actual cryptocurrencies. And then the other half had to do specifically with initial coin offerings, ICOs. The only crypto case that has been brought that doesn't include an ICO is the case against Ripple. This is very, very different. And, and uh, Gary Gensler is just pretending like it's, it's exactly the same thing. And so in an interview that, interview that Gary Gensler had with Jon Stewart, comedian Jon Stewart, formerly of The Daily Show, that's what he's most famous for, uh, Gary Gensler stated that he expects to take losses in such cases here and there. So how can you justify bringing enforcement action against businesses operating in the world of crypto and blockchain if you don't think you're going to win those cases? It really grinds my gears, folks. And that's why Garlinghouse, Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse, has stated this is regulation by enforcement. The SEC is not confident in their position, and they expect the court to figure things out for them and let that, whatever the findings be in court, set the precedent moving forward. That I find repugnant. That's absolutely repulsive, should not be allowed to stand. Regulation by enforcement harms all participants within the ecosystem, from investors to entrepreneurs. Everyone in the world of blockchain is harmed by this. It, it slows down entrepreneurial endeavors and other other uh, countries that aren't so stringent like this and provide it's not even just about stringency it's more about r clear rules of the road uh, countries that have clear rules of the road as it pertains to crypto and blockchain that's where uh, this technology is going to flourish it's going to happen one way or another it's just that uh, kim jong ginsler is happy to have it happen elsewhere because he just views everything as a security everything is a damn security <sighs> I think my biscuits are starting to get burnt right now. I don't know. Oh, it's mm, smelling like they're starting to get a little bit burnt. Mm, somebody better take them out the oven. And so there was this from attorney Jeremy Hogan. He shared um, a clip from Fox Business, which I just referenced there. You can see on the screen, there's Brad Garlinghouse with uh, Charles Gasparino. They were also speaking with uh, Liz Clayman, who was running the show that they were on, the Clayman Countdown. And so attorney Jeremy Hogan shared that clip. And then he quoted Brad Garlinghouse. And the quote from Brad Garlinghouse is as follows. 
I was meeting with Chairman Clayton. I met with SEC commissioners. No one ever once said XRP is a security, end quote. And then Jeremy Hogan writes, that's pretty powerful testimony, no? Uh, well, I sure as hell think so. How the hell do you meet with Clayton, uh, specifically in SEC commissioners, and no one ever once mentions, hey, you might be doing something wrong there. Yeah, you might want to take the foot off the gas a little bit. How come that never freaking happened? Well, we're going to get into that here. So attorney John Deaton responded to that from Jeremy Hogan and wrote the following. On August 20th, 2018, when Brad Garlinghouse and David Schwartz, with David Schwartz, of course, being uh, Ripple's CTO, co-creator of the XRP Ledger, when Brad Garlinghouse and David Schwartz met with Clayton and Hinman, and Brad said, quote, Ripple's living in purgatory because of the lack of clarity over XRP, end quote, you would think they would have responded, Brad, here's your clarity. XRP is a security, so stop selling it. But they didn't. Because it wasn't. Now, Tag XRP, uh, within a member of the XRP community, has shared all sorts of uh, highly interesting and relevant stuff having to do with the SEC versus Ripple case, uh, doing some research as well, responded to Attorney John Deaton here and wrote, uh, Clayton, as if this is coming from Clayton, this isn't the proper form for that. But tell me more about the technology. And so doesn't that ring true, though? Think about this. Brad Garlinghouse, David Schwartz, meeting with Jay Clayton. Because what he's referencing here, Brad Garlinghouse explicitly was saying, hey, not clarity for XRP here. What's going on? And, uh, and so Clayton's claiming that's not the proper form for that. Uh, of course, I'd like to know what is the proper form of not that, because they're talking explicitly about Ripple technology and XRP and the XRP ledger. That's not the proper form for that? Are you kidding me? So why, why would uh, Jay Clayton say that, but continue the conversation on the topic, just not wanting to answer that piece? Well, John Deaton has a little bit of insight to that, and here's what he wrote. He wrote, also, remember... The June 13th, 2018 XRP is a security mem memo. Let me pause. I, I think most of you know what it is at this point, but just in case it's important for this conversation. There is a memo from the SEC dated June 13th, 2018, and, and we haven't seen the contents of it. Ripple hasn't seen the contents of it, but the judge has. The judge has done an in-camera review, which just means in-person review of these documents. And this June 13th, 2018 memo, uh, which the SEC admits is about whether or not XRP is a security, uh, they, it indicates they did an analysis, okay? So even though we haven't seen it ourselves with our own eyes, we can glean some information just based on what's occurred at this point. And so John Deaton on this topic wrote the following. It did not recommend enforcement, referencing the SEC, of course. It did not recommend enforcement, th this memo from the SEC. This means, this is from John Deaton, this means it did not conclude XRP was clearly a security, Two months later, they bring in the CTO and CEO to learn more about it. Why? To sue. Exactly. So what was happening here was lead generation effectively. Or, or actually, you know what? That's not quite precise enough because the lead was already generated. They, they, they were already on Ripple's case about this, whether uh, Brad Garlinghouse knew about it or not. But they were definitely... Uh, they had bad intentions, and they were just trying to get some recon. They, so Brad goes in with David Schwartz, and they're operating in good faith, thinking that there's a good reason to have this conversation. And all Jay Clayton seems to have really wanted to do is just gain additional information, hopefully uh, arm them with some additional tidbits that they could sue later. That's what happened there. Now, Tag XRP jumped back in the, in the conversation wrote, That meeting... That was referenced. That meeting was one hour long. There should be notes, correct? And John Deaton wrote the following. He wrote, Yes. The SEC turned them over, didn't claim privilege. It's why you know the Roisman notes are good for Ripple. So what we're talking about here is the, the notes pertaining to this meeting between Brad Garlinghouse, David Schwartz, and, and, and uh, former uh, SEC chair and asshat Jay Clayton. Uh, the SEC wasn't claiming, hey, these are super duper top secret. We have privilege over these. You can't see them. They didn't say that on this. Those notes came out because it wasn't going to hurt the SEC's case. They already came out. But then we have these notes uh, there are notes pertaining to a, a meeting between two people, between former SEC commissioner, he was the commissioner at the time the meeting happened in November 2018, uh, between Elad Roisman, SEC commissioner, and Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse. Those were the two people that were active in the meeting, and there was a third person there, Matthew Estabrook, who was taking notes during that meeting. Now, the, they tried to get the notes, those notes, because it was known that there were supposed to be notes there. Initially, upon request of these notes, the SEC claimed that they didn't even exist. 
But then, magically, they were found in January of this year. Oh, oh, sorry, oops, our mistake. The notes do exist, but we're not going to give them to you. Keepsies on our end. That's basically what the SEC said. And... <laughs> And why? Because mind you, there was nothing super duper top secret in there. If there were, if it was, like, why was Brad Garlinghouse allowed to be in that meeting? Doesn't make any damn sense. With anybody that has half a brain that don't make no damn sense up in his bitch. So he, this is why John Dean says, you know that the notes are good for Ripple and not good for the SEC. And you might be saying, well, how, how could that be the case? I mean, Brad Garlinghouse was there, so what, what, he's already said what's in him. Why, why, why could, how could this be bad for the SEC? The reason is the notes would corroborate what Brad Garlinghouse said. Brad Garlinghouse stated that he was told during that meeting by Eli Roisman, then commissioner, one of the five people on the planet that votes on whether or not to bring legal action against pis, uh, individuals and, and businesses. Uh, he told Brad Garlinghouse, according to Brad Garlinghouse, that he did not believe XRP was a security. So it would corroborate exactly what he's stating. That would hurt the SEC case. So they're claiming that the notes are privileged and that nobody else should see them. You see how the game is played here? Doesn't seem quite right. Doesn't seem quite fair. And then there's this. So we've got the... Oh, the best is yet ahead. Stick with me, folks. Wait uh, wait till we get into the rest of what uh, Attorney John Deaton had to say. Um, I want to cover just a few sentences from this article, and then we're going to go straight into the exact comments uh, from, from John Deaton. So this piece is from Finance Feed, tit feed uh, titled SEC v. Ripple. Next decision critical for settlement or complete victory. Ripple, XRP holders, and the crypto ecosystem await Magistrate Judge Sarah Netburn's upcoming ruling on the SEC's motion for reconsideration. The SEC keeps fighting the production of relevant documents regarding ex-SEC William Hinman's 2018 speech on Ether. Now, John Deaton, founder of Crypto Law and attorney representing 65,000 XRP holders in the SEC v. Ripple case, uh, has previously said this will be the biggest decision in the case. The attorney seems optimistic about the outcome of that decision and the upcoming ruling on the Estabrook notes. And he shared his predictions on Twitter. So let's go ahead and jump right on over Twitter so that you can see it's on your screen right now. And let me read right on through this. Um, this is some really good stuff here. So here's the first tweet from attorney John Deaton. I'm going to go out on a limb and predict Judge Netburn denies the SEC's motion for reconsideration affirming her ruling that the 63 Hinman speech emails be produced. I'm already going, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm also going to predict the Estabrook notes regarding the meeting with Roisman must also be turned over. And so don't forget what he's referencing here. There are 63 emails, the SEC admits they have them, um, that are, are uh, directly linked to the Bill Hinman Ethereum free pass speech, when he, which he gave on June 14th, 2018. There are 63 emails, including drafts, associated with this. The judge has said, hey, SEC, you must turn all of this over. The SEC came back and said, we want you to reconsider, judge, and they gave uh, uh, reasons why. In fact, in one of the, uh, the letters that they sent to the judge, one of the requests, and I covered this in a video, and it was a glorious video, the judge responded with one word, denied. <laughs> which was lovely. I, I rather, it was a text only order. There was no explanation because the SEC went that far out of bounds. That, that, that's what it looked like to me anyway. Denied here. Um, and so then John Deaton said this. One reason I believe she will not reverse is because the SEC didn't follow the local rules. You are not allowed to offer an affidavit in support of a motion for reconsideration without court approval. Judge Torres's court is very strict with the rules. I know from firsthand experience, and he's got a little laughy face, and um, I think I know what he's referencing. I can't remember exactly what it was about because there's just been so many documents filed in this case for over the last year, like an insane amount, obviously. But there's something that um, I do remember Attorney Deaton submitted, and then the court wouldn't hear it. And so I think that's why he's joking, hey, firsthand experience here, if it's what I'm thinking of anyway here. But... Um, but, but yeah, so the, the point being, hey, this is a strict court. The, the, the rules are set. You must follow them. The SEC didn't do that. And so that's why he's saying what, what he's saying on that point. And uh, then there was this. So there's this video clip shared by my fellow XRP YouTuber, the Digital Asset Investor. And it shows a clip of Gary Gensler on August 3rd, 2021, just gloating we haven't lost a case. So it's what I was referencing earlier, earlier the, the little over 70 cases, might have been 75 cases at the time, with half of them having nothing to do with cryptocurrencies, just maybe loosely related to blockchain firms, and the other half having to do with ICOs. Uh, he's stating about referencing those cases. We, he's bragging, we haven't lost a single case. 
Then, <laughs> this interview between Jon Stewart and Gary Gensler aired yesterday, and then he said, eh, we, we plan to take some losses from time to time. Well, what in the ever-loving hell is that? Like I was saying earlier in the video, you plan to take losses? You're planning for it? That if you're planning for it, then you must know that what the hell you're saying all up in this bitch don't make no goddamn sense. That's what Moon Lambo thinks up in this hot damn, at least. What the hell do you think? You know, <laughs> it's completely resurgent and, and, uh, and I, 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 that brain broke down. That's how bad it is. That You just broke Moon Lambo's brain. Like, that, <laughs> that's how stupid this is. There are no words. There are no additional words, at least. What the hell? <laughs> it's so stupid. S-T-O-O-P-I-D. Stupid. So on that, on that tweet, John Deaton shared it. He retweeted it and re he wrote the following. And this is solid. This is what attorney John Deaton said. And he's referencing Gary Ginzer, of course. He's been advised Ripple could achieve a complete victory. Folks, let me pause here. That's the reason that he's changing his tune. That, that's what attorney John Deaton is surmising. And I think that's perfectly reasonable speculation. I, I'd say likely. I'd go so far as to say likely. Anyway, John Deaton continues. This makes Judge Netburn's reconsideration decision even more significant. Only when and if the SEC is forced to turn over the 63 Henman speech emails and possibly other notes, will the SEC come to the table? And so he's talking about if, if they're going to come to the table and consider any sort of settlement, it's going to be after all that. And again, the, the, I've been highlighting on this channel, and many others have been talking about this as well, like, the degree to which the SEC is is doing everything they can desperately to keep what's in these uh, these emails and what's in the Estabrook notes from the public. They've gone to extreme lengths. It looks pathetic, it looks desperate, and they don't fight this hard for notes that don't matter. It's noticeably different than how they're treating other notes, like the Clayton notes, which were happily turned over with no fight whatsoever. There's something in these folks I don't know what it is for sure, but I would speculate that it's something that's very damning to their argument. Very damning, having to do specifically with XRP. Uh, that, you know, because look, if they didn't come to the conclusion that XRP is a security at that time, I mean, come on, folks. It's completely ridiculous. And then, uh, it's worth highlighting this as well. I'll be brief on this. I thought I'd just point this out. Uh, this comes from Fox Business journalist Charles Gasparino, and he wrote this. Scoop, via Eleanor Terrett, who is also uh, with Fox Business... According to his latest financial disclosures, SEC Chair Gary Gensler is heavily invested in an emerging markets ETF that has a 3% exposure to Russia. Big money managers like BlackRock have held informal talks with the SEC to exempt them from a 2016 law that puts a cap on the proportion of illiquid funds they can hold. This means that Gensler would be voting to change laws relating to his own investments. Big conflict of interest, question mark? Well, that's worth knowing. Shady much? Well, let, we'll see what happens. I mean, I, I'll, I'll reserve judgment a little bit. That's why I said it with a question mark there. Uh, let's see what actually happens with this. But uh, John Deaton had an opinion on this. He wrote the following. Conflicts of interest and appearances of impropriety are not that big of a deal to Chairman Ginsler. He meets with Wall Street big shots, but ignores 65,000 retail investors who have pleaded to be heard. Maybe John Stewart, who recently sat down with Gensler, will hear us out. And he tagged John Stewart in that. That would be awesome. I would love for that to happen. Uh, so that's where we're at, folks. This has been one hell of a roller coaster ride, hasn't it? With all sorts of fun loop de loops and scary hills to the downside, right? <laughs> but mostly, <laughs> mostly in terms of what's happening, seriously, and all the pretrial stuff. Ever, it's it's almost all of it has been to the upside, positive. Uh, in, in terms of uh, you know what it means for Ripple and XRP holders ultimately, so I'm I'm very optimistic to, to some to some degree cautious. You know I don't want to get ahead of myself, but I'm pretty damn optimistic that this is going to go well. Whether it means settlement or full adjudication in the favor of Ripple, fine. Either way, I will be a happy little moon lamp. I am not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very 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 bad idea. Until next time, to the moon Lambo.